All right, welcome back to the new music. One thing you hear a lot about when you talk about music is can somebody be a career artist? You get a lot of one-hit wonders, you get a lot of flashes in the pan, and especially in the game of hip-hop where you get so-and-so featuring so-and-so, so-and-so featuring so-and-so. To get a career with a bunch of albums is a very difficult thing to do. Cypress Hill, well, they've bucked the odds. They're back with a new record. They've been together for over 10 years, and we caught up with them right here in Los Angeles. It is sort of a surprise to still be able to be relevant to people now these days because uh, there's so many groups out in comparison to when we first came out. There wasn't uh, a lot, a lot of hip hop out there like it is now. I come scoop you in that coop, sitting on two zeros. Ecstasy is ain't nothing but an ink thing, baby. So there's so many people to compete with now. But I think that's one of the things that keeps us hungry is that we know we have to compete. During the course of our career, we, we've developed two sets of, of fans. One is obviously the hip hop and rap audience, you know, which is our foundation. And the other is the more alternative crowd. Our longevity is like the Grateful Dead, but our strength is like Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin. You know what I mean? Consistently making good shit and all a lot of turmoil in the group. <laughs> Are you ready? Hip-hop has become, um, it's pop culture now. You know what I mean? It's become a formulated music. I think it was the urban punk rock when we came in. You know what I mean? And now it's everything it despised hip-hop has became, you know? And it's more of a marketing promotional tool than the music being great. If you live like... Uh, a superstar in seclusion and walk around with bodyguards and seem unapproachable, you know, then you, you can't really call yourself a person for the people or of the people because you got a bunch of people to keep away <laughs> the regular people. But, you know, we've, live, we've lived our lives like regular people, you know, no bodyguards, no flashy shit. I think there's too much you know, going on in the, you know in the mind frame of a human being to actually rap about uh, you know my my jewels or whatever or my fancy rims that I got in my car and I do have all of that shit but I just, I, <laughs> I, I don't have to rap about it. I just try to use all the personal experiences because those will make the best songs that people can relate to and find something from and I try to you know. Uh, you know, touch a person in a positive way through the music, not glorifying the violence or the drug use or anything like that. It's all, you know, meant to be positive, you know, uh, but un, un um, but not watered down. We want to make it harsh because reality is harsh. Medicine is harsh. It doesn't ever taste good, <laughs> you know, but it's good for you in the long run. You know, we're trying to open people's eyes with with a lot of the things we say, so there may be a lot of the kids coming up, maybe going the wrong direction, can can take from that and maybe say, well, you know what? Instead of going this way, let me go this way, and maybe this way is better for me. For a long time, when people tried to find out what the message was, all they ever thought about was it was a pop message. That, that the last couple of records, doesn't seem to be the focus of this band. We slowly filtered it out, you know, um, because people know what we stand for. They know we're, we're pro-marijuana activists. I don't think we got to shove any more Get High songs down their throat. We've written just about every kind of Get High song you can. <laughs> Other than eating brownies, hey, that's a new song. Our music is important, and we want people to know that we're in it for the music, and we just happen to like to smoke weed. Is there an echo in here? <laughs> Are you trying to get crazy with this, see? Don't you know I'm local? local?